So now in this video we're going to come back to a sawtooth generator circuit that I made with the 555 timer. So we did that by taking the timing capacitor and giving it a steady current. So this is the LM334. I'm just going to do a quick review. But in case with this three terminal, it looks like a transistor, but uh, with the uh, LM334 it applies 0 0.064 volts, 64 millivolts between those two pins. You put a resistor in there and so that voltage divided by the resistance, 6800 ohms right there, we're going to get about 10 microamps. So while the capacitor is charging, nothing else is taking current. All that current is going to go into the capacitor. The way we have this wired up, it gets to two-thirds supply voltage, it discharges. So that's pretty much instantly. So sometimes we will make this without the diode. And in that case, you have the uh, regular 555 timer, one-third and two-thirds supply voltage. We got that five total right there, where it bounces back and forth because it's in a stable mode. Now you can see we got with diode here, we get a lower voltage. So if we take the output, which uh, technically we're not using in this circuit for the signal, but uh, we can take the output when the uh, capacitor here is discharging through pin seven, pin three is also connected to ground right there. And so that is being fed to pin five when it's low, because you can see it's a diode, the cathode more negative, and uh, that will pull down the voltage to the control pin, which adjusts the internal one-third, two-thirds supply voltage divider. And so it's going to pull the voltage down that it's looking for, for the uh, low point there. And then, uh, so you can see it'll rise to two-thirds supply voltage just fine because the output will be high enough that will be going on. And uh, then when it drops down though, the diode's going to pull that voltage down and it will dip all the way down to almost zero volts. So that's probably a diode drop above that, somewhere about 0.6 volts probably. But in any case, just going to keep going back and forth. So we showed that in the last video. We cannot take that capacitor voltage and power anything. We're only dealing with 10 microamps right there. Uh, so LED just going to hold the voltage down, probably not even show any light, and uh, nothing's going to happen. We're just going to lock a place. So we're giving that signal to an amplifier. So the non-inverting input does not need any current. That's the focus of this video. We're just taking that signal that we looked at in the last video and we're going to apply it to an LED the voltage wise, but the signal won't have to provide any current. We have the output here. We also have to power the LM358, it's a single supply op amp. So we're just gonna take the five volts from the supply right there. So sometimes you'll see that on the schematic, sometimes you won't. You always have to power these integrated circuits. So in any case, we have the signal voltage here. We have the output, this is wired as a voltage follower, so we got a direct connection to the inverting input. So when you got feedback here, the output does what it can to get the uh, voltage with the negative feedback at the inverting input to be the same as the non-inverting input. And uh, so the way it gets the voltage there, the same that is there is it outputs the same voltage that we have at the non-inverting input. And uh, so that voltage, as long as it can provide enough current, is going to power the LED and its protective resistor at that voltage. Since it will be no more than 5 volts, 220 ohms will be plenty to protect a red or any other color LED. And here we are. So here's the waveform I like with the red LED. The red LED is just staying on now because the input is floating. But we'll look here, we got uh, 5 volts there, just a speck above because you lose a little bit of voltage on the way to the uh, circuit. So now we're gonna zoom in a little bit. We covered the uh, 555 timer circuitry in the last video, but we can look and see that it goes up five squares when we go directly to the rail. So we got that there. And uh, I'm out of uh, jumper spots there. So I'm gonna come to the output over here and you're gonna see the LED start to, uh, actually no. You're not going to see uh, the LED do anything. It turned off because the uh, oscilloscope is uh, pulling the uh, voltage down. So, in any case, we got the LM358 th uh, there. We have to power it, positive supply to pin 8, uh, negative supply to ground. And you can see here that we have the output on top, inverting input below it, and the uh, non-inverting input below that. So, 
that's where they were on the schematic inverting above non-inverting sometimes on the schematic they'll put the inverting below the non-inverting so you got to pay close attention on the physical component the inverting here is always above the non-inverting so in any case we will uh, zoom in and you can see we got the protective resistor going from the output to the uh, LED there and then the other side of the LED the cathode to ground long lead to anode up there and we got this little jumper from the inverting input to the output so we will actually move that over one more spot so the uh, oscilloscope makes a like 1 million ohm resistance from uh, from that point uh, to ground so that's enough to pull the voltage down to uh, keep the uh, uh, output from oscillating on and off rapidly that's probably what it was doing when the LED was on so now we got the jumper so it's still producing that waveform there but now I'll get it to the uh, non-inverting input now you can see the LED is turning on as the voltage rises right there so I think that looks pretty good for the red LED and uh, so now we're gonna pluck that diode and now we get the two-third to uh, one-third supply voltage and uh, maybe you like the way that looks with the red LED too that doesn't look uh, too bad and uh, I think it might look better with the blue LED in this case so if the LED doesn't light up at all but you see there is a voltage change that means you probably put it in backwards unless it's burnt out or something remember you gotta put LEDs in the right way but in any case as you can see I think that looks pretty good with the blue LED at that waveform it takes a little more voltage to get them to start conducting and uh, we can just take the uh, diode put it back and uh, get back to all the way to zero volts but now you can see the LED is off uh, longer in this case but maybe that's what you, what you want you can make all these uh, changes so in any case hope you found the video interesting make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting click like subscribe the bell that donate patreon if you can that helps out the most but just watching videos helps out a ton thanks to everybody that does that I will see you in the next video